Sandra Odeni, Girl Rising Program Manager Kenya. Girl Rising is a non-profit that uses the power of storytelling to change the way the world values girls and their education. Today we are here to celebrate the International Day of the Girl 2021. This is an annual event that celebrates girls around the world and we in Kenya thought today we would meet and celebrate the efforts of the girls in their communities and the contributions they make to better their lives. today to today's event. Um, my name is Stella and I am a Freely in Hope scholar. I am going to be the host. So before we start, I want us to start with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you this morning. We invite your, your presence to be in this place today. Thank you for giving us the gift of life and for enabling us to attend this event. We ask you, Lord, to guide us and we also pray that each and every one of us is going to understand and also to learn and be inspired because of this event. And it is in the mighty name of Jesus that you have prayed. Amen. Um, I welcome you again uh, to today's event. This is the International Day of the Girl. I am sure that most of you have heard what International Day of the Girl is. And today we are here to celebrate you all, the girls. And also we have the theme for, to, for this year's event. And the theme is Closing the Digital Divide to accelerate change. So the meaning of this theme is that it is to encourage girls to break barriers um, and boundaries because most boys have taken the space to be in the technology world. You have seen that, right? Most boys are, in, are doing science and technology but there are not many girls that are doing these things to do with technology and science. And so, because of this theme, we are here to encourage girls to be the problem-solving scientists so that they can be able to provide solutions and tackle the issues that are in the society. There are many, many issues, and such issues are poverty, we have issues like um, poor health. We have issues like um, instability and many, many others. And also, the reason why we celebrate International Day of the Girl, like I have mentioned, it was started by the United Nations in the year 2012, if I'm not wrong. And We, the event is to celebrate girls all over the world. It is an international event. I also believe there are other people in other places that are celebrating this event. And I encourage you today um, to learn and let us have an engaging session. And we also have the event goals. And one of them is to remind girls of their potential and uniqueness, to celebrate girls who are using digital technology to make change in their community, to encourage girls to use technology and to speak out and claim their rights. In today's program, we have different organizations. We have Freely in Hope, we have Girl Rising, and also we have another one is Sunflower Organization. And with that being said, 
We have an amazing, beautiful lady. She's from Freeling Hope. She's a scholar, and she's going to introduce to us what Freeling Hope is all about. And let's welcome Beryl. Let's appreciate Beryl as she comes. Oh, my name, uh, like has, has been said, I am Beryl Apio, and I'm a student at Zitech University pursuing Mass and Communication Studies. Oh, so today we are so happy to celebrate the International Day of the Girl Child. And uh, as our host has said, we are, part we are partnering with uh, different organizations. Uh, so I'm here briefly to tell us what Freeling Hope does. Okay, so before I start that, I'll just welcome the Freeling Hope. Okay, I'll call the Freeling Hope family to stand up and just wave. Be just stand up the Freeling Hope family before. Okay, so thank you. That is the Freeling Hope family. And now I'll briefly tell us what it does uh, to ensure that uh, the girl uh, has a voice, has, has power, has everything it takes to be uh, great people in this world, in this nation. Okay, so Freelinop is a faith-based organization that equips survivors and advocates to lead in ending the circle of sexual violence in Kenya and Zambia. We do that by providing holistic educational opportunities for high school and university students so that survivors can achieve their academic dreams and thrive. We also establish safe space that develop our scholars to become leaders through training and educational resources. We provide storytelling platforms uh, for scholars and advocates to share their stories with dignity to cultivate both personal and collective healing. Our storytelling platforms include, number one, we have ENESA, uh, a sexual violence prevention program for high school students. Uh, we have Malkia, a program that provides vocational and life skills training to empower women, to empower women working in prostitution. Uh, we have Linda Toto, a sexual prevention program that teaches children of ages four to 12 on how to recognize and report abuses. Uh, lastly, we run advocacy workshops where we share best practices in ending sexual violence with other survivors, advocates, and practitioners. That's pretty much of what we do in a nutshell. Thank you. Thank you so much, Wairimu. Uh, my name is Deborah Odenyi, the program manager, Girl Rising, Kenya. Um, I'm delighted to, in, uh, to have you here. Thank you so much for making your time. Uh, this event is co-hosted by Freely in Hope, and we appreciate that you decided to take some time today to be with us to celebrate this important day. And so Girl Rising is a global nonprofit that um, power of storytelling to change the way the world values girls and also their education. And so we work across 12 countries globally, but the Kenya program is in collaboration with seven organizations. And today here I'm delighted to be with two of the organizations, Big Picture Learning Kenya and Sunflower Trust. I will invite them shortly to come and also say hi. And so the Kenya program uses a curriculum-based approach where we generate dialogue on gender and education issues. And so we use this curriculum with our, with our collaborating organizations to spark dialogue within communities to address issues of gender and also education that affect girls and boys within their communities. We also use this approach to foster develop, and develop their leadership skills. And so we hope today's event will be interactive, there will be shared learning, and we shall have an enjoyable day. Karibuni sana, asanteni kwa kuja. Welcome, Sunflower and Big Picture Learning. Those are the ones we have in Kenya. We also work with other organizations known as METIS as a partner 
We have PACE International also in Nairobi, Pacemaker International in Nairobi. We have Murua Girl Child in Narok. We have um, Thorn Tree Project in Samburu. We also work with Teach for Kenya in Nairobi. Karibu sana. Karibu sana. Big picture learning. Uh, Debbie, thank you so much, Freely Hope, for having us. Uh, my name is Caroline Owala, and I'm the co-founder and executive director of uh, the organization uh, Big Picture Learning Kenya. So at Big Picture Learning Kenya, we believe that um, people do their best work they, when they pursue their interest and passion. And so we support our students to pursue their interest and passion. And how we do that is by partnering with community secondary schools that serve the neediest students in Kenya. So we have schools in Kangemi, Kawangware, and Udiru. We support those schools by training their teachers and school leaders who then facilitate passion-driven projects. So during school holidays, Berlin, VAT, Stanley, some of the students that you'll get to hear uh, their stories today, they go for internship. Um, we link them to mentors. They do community service projects, you know, in the hope of, you know, um, the goal of pursuing their passion and um, their interest and passion, which I talked about. So we are really happy to be here. We've been partners with Girl Rising. This is the third year and we are really uh, seeing a lot of changes. Thank you. My name is Rukia Sebit, and I'm the co-founder and executive director of Sunflower Trust. So Sunflower is all about literacy. When you hear Sunflower, link it to literacy. So what we do is that uh, we, we work with uh, private informal schools within uh, Kibira informal settlements, because Kibira has all sides. So we've partnered currently with 11 schools to improve the literacy levels of girls from class five up to class eight. So we started in, uh, in the year 2018, and right now we have uh, touched more than 300 girls in the primary schools. Our pilot class is in class eight, so we're actually looking forward to the results. And how we do it is that uh, we take them through literacy activities, life skills, including uh, the Girl Rising curriculum. We also have arts. You'll actually have a sample of what arts is for us, just to improve the self-esteem and also to ensure that the girls take the right career path in future. Thank you, and welcome to the event. And also one thing that I, I forgot to mention is that we have um, good things that are aligned for each and every one of us today. We have entertainment. And if you are hungry after this session, we have snacks. Um, so don't feel bored. And <laughs> so I am going to our next session. We have a young lady. And she is going to sing a song for us. And through that, um, she's going to tell us how she's challenging the gender norms using um, digital media. And her name is Marlene Atieno. She is a 21-year-old young lady who was born and raised in Kibera. She is also an entrepreneur who started her business at the age of 20. She is passionate and very vocal in advocating for the rights of girls and women in all spheres. Her tenacity landed her an opportunity to serve as a liaison officer at Poly, Polycom Development Project, where she coordinates activities surrounding the She Leads Project. Her heart beats for music, and so other than being a very talented singer, she also volunteers as a, as a music teacher. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for Marlene Atieno.
My name is Marlene, as you've heard. I have a passion in music. And so I will bless your souls with a song called uh, Scars to Your Beautiful. Um, I know many a times, personally me being brought up in Kibera, I know many a times we've had scars in our lives, you know, things that make us feel like, ah, you know, the dignified life is for the other people in the other side of Kibera, yeah? But your scars are your beautiful. Sawa sawa? And please don't look at me like that. Please encourage me. I'm also shy. <laughs> I'm just joking. And with me here is Melfon. Ebum to clap here, boy child. Asante sana. We understand that is in, in this race we cannot do it alone. Cindy? Yes, we have brothers, we have our fathers, and so Melfon, thank you for gracing us. Yeah. She just wants to be beautiful, she goes unnoticed, she knows no limit, she craves attention, she praises an image, she prays to be sculpted by the sculptor. She just wants to be beautiful she goes unnoticed she knows no limit she craves attention she praises an image she prays to be sculpted by the sculptor oh she don't see the last the shining deeper than the eyes can find it maybe we've made a blind so she tries to cover up a pain and Kara was away, cause cover girls don't cry after the face is made. But there's a hope that's waiting for you in the dark. You should know you're beautiful just the way you are. And you don't have to change a thing, the world could change its heart. No scars to your beautiful, we're stars and we're beautiful. Oh, 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 you don't have to change a thing, the world could change its heart. No scars to your beautiful, we're scars and we're beautiful. She has dreams to be, and envy shows his. Starving, you know, cover girls, it's nothing she says. Beauty is pain and there's beauty in everything. Was a little bit of hunger, I can go a little while longer. She fades away, she don't see how perfect, she don't understand. She's worth it all, that beauty goes deeper than the surface, oh, oh. So to all the girls that had it, let me be a mirror. Help us see a little bit clearer. The lies are shining within. There's a hope that's waiting for you in the dark. You should know you're beautiful just the way you are. And you don't have to change a thing. The world could change its heart. No scars to your beautiful. The scars and we're beautiful. Oh. heart no scars to your beautiful with scars and we're beautiful thank you so much <laughs> let me answer the question I was asked how am I challenging gender norms using digital media of course through music one and something else I do is um, being that I'm the liaison officer in my organization I 
I, I mobilize people to have Twitter marathons, where we just talk about the retrogressive actions that are done to, uh, against women, and that's how, and also something else we do in organization is that we all usually have radio talks. And so we, we sensitize the community about these retrogressive actions against women. Yeah, thank you so much. Wow. Come on, guys, let's appreciate Marlene again. Um, she did a very amazing job. I think I should see her to, to teach me how to sing. <laughs> and she did a very amaz uh, an amazing song that your scars are beautiful. Do you know that? Yes. Everybody here, I don't know if most of you, but I know most of you, but they have scars, and I want to, to tell you that they are beautiful. Um, we move to the next session. So we are going to have a panel discussion, and we have amazing panelists, and also the moderator. They are going to tell us how we can use digital technology to accelerate change in the community. And I am going to call Rukia from Sunflower. She is the moderator. So let's appreciate Rukia. Communities. So right now I have two amazing speakers who are actually young people and uh, I've actually seen a lot of us have smartphones. So they will share the experience and also how to use the digital uh, technology positively. So I welcome Balin Muteo and Iveti. Let's give them a round of applause. So they are from the communities that we are within. They'll tell us briefly their names, their actual names, and also what they do in those communities before we start. Welcome. Thank you. So hello, everyone. How are you? Oh, you're so dull today. I can say you look stunning. Wow. So happy International Day of the Girl to all of you, please. Happy International Day of the Girl. How are you feeling about that? Tell your neighbor I'm proud to be a girl. <laughs> so my name is Muteo Balin Lukalishi. I'm from Big Picture Learning Kenya, but I'm also part of the Girl Raising Program. I'm in the 12th grade, and I'm passionate about law. And I would also love to, like, I would love to take law when I'm done with school, because I'll be finishing. Uh, that is next year, because I'm in 12th grade for now. Yes. Hello, how are you? Leo mnakaaje po? Mbona sikupata message WhatsApp? Okay, so like my name's uh, Vieti Mushiri. I'm 18 years old and I'm part of Big Picture Learning in Kenya and I'm passionate about medicine and my aspiring career is to be a neurosurgeon. So as to what I've been doing in the community, um, during COVID time, I had a project which was um, called Mental Health Awareness Amongst the Youths. So I was basically gathering some information on how my fellow youths were coping with the challenges that COVID brought. And as we all know, the challenges were that, you know, schools were closed and, you know, yeah, I just wanted to understand how we can help our fellow youths to just like, you know, cope with the challenges that they were getting during that time. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. And we have Faith who has just joined us. Faith Karibu. She will briefly tell us about herself, what she does. Yeah, Karibu sana. Hi, guys. Uh, I can see that the energy is on another level. I'm Faith Njeri from Freely in Hope. Uh, I'm grateful to be here. Um, Karibu ni sana. So, to kick us off, uh, we come from, most of us come from inf informal settlements, and we've also seen young people from the rural areas who 
either don't have access to technology and they, if they do, they actually don't have the right skills to interact with technology. So to my panelists, how have you been able to use digital technology to ignite change within your communities? Okay, uh, I'll kick it off. Uh, for me, it, it was something that I wanted to do for a very long time. And so, like every time I was telling myself, ah, oh, Faith, you have to start a YouTube channel. Faith, you can do this. You can post a photo and maybe like, write a good caption so that people maybe can comment and they can see, like, they can maybe tell you something that you can do in future and it will help you. So for me, it started with something that was coming constantly to my mind and I needed to take action. So my action was not only like at the waking up in the morning and starting a YouTube channel. No, it was not like that. It took a family, Freedom Hope family, like every time they would give me a platform to talk to people. And every time I got that platform, I knew that, ah, so if like my family believes in me, who, who is the world? Who is someone else? So it is start with your family. A family is not only like those people who you see, like those who you're born with, but even those people who cheer you up, who believes in you, who tells you your values, like who are there to correct you and to make you like move to another level. So every time we, we went for a um, retreat, they would give me a platform maybe to like do something that is motivational or something that will entice people and I took that as an honor. So when I was starting my YouTube channel, I knew what I wanted. I knew where to start from. So I, st I just started a YouTube and said that this channel will be, I'll be sharing poetry. Because in Freedom Hope, we have stories. And every time, our dreams are almost the same. We just want to share our stories so that we can be able like, to heal and to help other girls. So it just took that one step that I took to start a channel and start sharing my story through poetry. So in my YouTube channel, you'll get some poems, you'll get, like that is how I entice people. That is how I decided to grow and that is how I decided to make someone else feel that you are, your story doesn't define you. It makes you wake up and have confidence. So that is, that is it. You have to believe in yourself. From there, I, I started um, Instagram lives. Those lives, I started inviting people, like great people. Like when I hear someone has got something that can empower another person, another girl in the community, I give them a platform to come and discuss on my Instagram live at every Sunday at 8 p.m. So like it's, it's really working. A lot of people are getting inspired and they are getting motivated. I didn't end there, but I still went on to my Facebook. And now everything that I do on my YouTube, everything that I do on my Instagram, I post it on my Facebook so that those people, because I believe that YouTube, a lot of people that are there are young people. and. Um, on my YouTube, a lot of people that follow me are only the ones that are on my, on my circle. Since I want to reach to many panel, as in to many people as I can, many girls in my community as I can, I have to go to Facebook where I can get those people who are deep inside our communities where they can't be able to access such platform like YouTube and Instagram. And that is my journey. Thank you for sharing your story. Malin? For me, I think technology influences us in everything that we do, right? Uh, like right now, the way we are here, the way we are talking, I all start with technology. So basically for me, okay, I'll start from maybe last year, how I've been using uh, technology. So last year was like a COVID season, and most of us were suffering. We were out of schools, right? 
So through Big Picture Learning Kenya, we were taught about technological literacy. And through that, you managed to do um, online learning, that is through Google Meet or even Zoom. And we managed to learn about projects. So last year, I did a project concerning the elderly. And it was all about disseminating the elderly people in my community, that is Kangemi, with some of the basic necessities that they needed, and they could not have them, and even the correct information that you know they needed during COVID-19. And why am I saying this? It's because uh, my dad, my father actually, uh, is an elderly person, so it started from where I lived. So how did I use technology, uh, you know, to make change in my community or even to influence people? Uh, you know, when you want to do something, you really need to do research about what you are doing. Like basically for me, I had to do interviews, both with, you know, people who are, let's say, like doctors for me to get the information. I also needed, you know, like to do research about what's happening out there in my community. So how did I do this? Uh, I used like, you know, you have to Google some things, you still have to do research and because we were not meeting virtually due to COVID-19 protocols, I just had to do like, you know, you have meetings with people just online and then you talk to them. So I used to, like, I usually do meetings with people like, you know, Madam Carol, just to get some advice from her of what I was doing. And that one I did it through, you know, Google Meet or even Zoom. And then something else apart from that, is that um, I'm actually trying to influence girls in my community because I'm sure that most girls for now, we are actually suffering with things such as, you know, in my community, things such as, you know, panties, pixie cups, or even sanitary towels. So because I'm actually in my 12th grade year, we always have like, you know, WhatsApp video calls or even meetings on WhatsApp where we just talk like girls. You know, you talk about what are some of the challenges that are facing you? How can you make change in that community? How can you influence other people or your fellow girls to just make change? Or how can you make people feel like, or other girls to feel like they have the voice? So through that, I've managed to you know, disseminate five girls with some panties and some pixie cups. Yes, and then something else is that, uh, through that, I believe that I've been doing that like on social media platforms, like if, if you can search me on Instagram or even on Facebook, you'll find me like, I just want girls to know like, they have the voice, the voice is in us, we have the power, and the power is in us. So I always like, you know, put motivational quotes on my Facebook account or even on my Instagram account to just let you know like, you have the ability, the voice in, is in you, and you can be able to do it and make change in the world. Thank you. Thank you. Hello again. Um, so on the social platforms that I am familiar with and I use is, uh, for example, Facebook. So like, let me just base it off last year. As I was doing my project based on mental health, I needed, I was thinking about how I can get my, okay, like first of all, I needed to identify my target audience, which was the youths. And I thought about how am I going to bring or just unite all these people, like the, the, my youth, how am I going to bring them all into one place, a place where they can feel safe to share their stories and their struggles. And that's where Facebook came in. And I started a support group for my, for my fellow youths um, where they could just come you know, um, in, you know, incognito, they could just come, share some of their stories, listen to some other, you know, stories from their fellow peers as well so that they could feel encouraged. And uh, yeah, and I believe that this exposure, um, it helped them become, you know, better di digital citizens and they would gain more insight, in insightful information about um, on success stories from their fellow peers and the ways of implementing them and also they learned how to teach it to others. Yeah, thank you very much. You can actually, you know, just talk to them later to make sure that you follow their pages because I know like what, from what they've said, they're actually doing great job that uh, we can benefit from. So, you know, with all, good, with all the good things that we've said, we know there's cyberbullying, sexual harassment, and online exploitation that, you know, happens every day. If you're not careful, you'll get into those traps. So, you know, to my team, so how do you ensure that um, we are safe 
or yourself online and also you also get to preach and ensure that uh, there is no there's less gender based violence issues and at, at the same time youth can or young people can claim their rights online country so it's not easy some people will just come there with their own intentions others will just come like to destroy what you're doing not everyone is happy so the only thing that will save you is when you just take the positive things and the positive things will only get them from your family like the people that believes in you the people that are there with good intentions but when you concentrate with the other people like you start like uh, as in when people harass you and you are there with them like you're trying to prove yourself they will even harass you more and you will the two of you will look like you're not okay upright so i will just add everyone who has such a goal just concentrate with the positive things let the positive move you leave the negative alone make the good change that you can and don't like you are not perfect and you will never be perfect but it takes one person to move you from one place to another like it takes your heart when you decide that you're going to move you're going to 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 do the right thing or you're going like to to follow what your heart tell you don't listen to negative voices that will come aside just push on your positive and tutapatana mbele okay so the way you know like in everything you do in every successful story there must be a pain somewhere or there must be challenges somewhere right so like for now of course like if you're on any social media platform there must be challenges there if i'm not wrong cyberbullying is there you'll always get like you know bad comments some people will be like you know what i don't like what what are you even doing and those comments will be there but how can you you know how can you come out of this how can you make change of what you are seeing out there how can you not let what other people are saying not to influence you negatively i want to tell you this each time i always face a challenge i'm always like these challenges are there to strengthen me because there is no way you can succeed without facing a challenge then that success won't last for long for long am i wrong you always need to face challenges and you need to embrace those challenges no matter what so let me say like for example okay um if maybe like what i always do first is that i discover the root or the cause of maybe let's say like cyberbullying that that one of course it's happening on you know social media how can i cover this you'll always have to discover the root or the cause of that cyberbullying you know how did this person come and meet me how did this person come and get me and then from there you can be like do you know what this is how i need to tackle this problem something else is we all need someone in our lives like for me for now i have a support system uh, my support system you know it's part of the big picture learning team and also my family and my friends like you know when you're not okay and it's also okay not to be okay so when i'm not okay i'll always turn to them and be like do you know what madam carol i'm not okay do you know what lorraine today i'm not feeling okay and then they'll be like balin you can do this and this and this because maybe you can be making decisions on your own and they're not and they're not even helping and then something else when it comes to gender based violence uh this is these are things that are happening in our community these are things that are facing us but just don't look at you alone if maybe gender based violence is facing me then what about this other girl what about this other person how can i help them we can only do it like let's say for me i always come together you know with my friends let's say for example you're walking and then you know some boys will always like you're walking and then people will you know throw at you some insult you know how sometimes boys are you can stand out and you know give out your voice be like no this is wrong if you will do that will you die you won't die people will see like do you know what this girl has power she believes in what she's doing this girl knows what she wants just give out your voice speak out don't let violence to happen to you and you're not speaking out i believe your voice can make change in everything that you're doing thank you okay so first things first um i just want to be brutally honest with you guys 
cyberbullying and gender-based violence, it's there and it's real. And I've had many people, especially girls who have been traumatized, who have been led to suicide because of such um, you know, activities online, and it does not get easy. But um, on some of the ways that you can you know, help to curve or prevent some of this or just handle them is having the right digital literacy where you identify, let's say, for example, if you want to share your story to the world, you can start by identifying the relevant um, social platforms that you, you'll use. For example, we have Facebook, Twitter, we have Instagram, and et cetera. So identifying them and knowing exactly how they run for example, there's, uh, they, you have, okay, they have features on them. For example, um, there's the block feature. I'm sure most of us are aware with that feature from these apps, where if you find that as you're sharing your story, you find some individuals who either comment um, bad things in your posts or they just, like you see, they, they don't really seem um, encouraging to you and also to your audience. You can use that feature, just block them. Block them, it's that easy. And um, on the kind of content that one, um, you know, the kind of content that you want to receive from these platforms and also the kind of audience, your target audience, there's also the features where you have suggestions. There's suggestions on these apps. It asks you, who do you want to see your, your nini? Who do you want to see your content? What kind of people do you want to see? So please use those, those features in those apps. And another thing is, um, if you're punish, passionate about whatever you're sharing, just tell your story, it's yours, tell it. Don't let someone discourage you or tell you that because you're a girl or anything like that. Who said that being a girl makes you weaker than anyone else? Who said so? No one, right? Share your story, it's yours to tell. And I encourage many girls out there, I'm sure there's someone out there, a girl who's out there is saying, I wish I had someone to look up to, someone to encourage me. Be that change. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. So my take home, eh, when you're putting up a story, you need to be firm about it. Stand to what you're saying, what you're preaching. Have a support group. Things will happen, you know. People will put those comments, images. So have a, that support group so that you, do, you don't just go and delete everything that you've put up. And I mean, share, be positive with what you share. So from these uh, great young people, I think we've learned something or two, and you can actually, you know, talk to them later to just understand what they do, and also if you have any challenges that you're currently facing, maybe in your pages, they're here. They're still here until we close the day. So yeah, thank you very much for listening and also for sharing your stories. And I pass it, the mic back to Stella. Thank you. Faith, Berlin, Muteo, and Viet. They did an amazing job, and they are actually um, leaving the, the theme. Like, if you read on the T-shirts, it is written, raise your voice in digital space. And that is exactly what they are doing in the spaces that they are in, in the social media. They are encouraging girls. They are fighting for, for people. They are telling stories. They are inspiring the society, and that is what I want to encourage you to, to do. And I believe that you are learning. I have learned a lot. So thank you so much. Please let's appreciate them again. Um, so we have uh, the organization. It's called the BPLK. The, they are going to tell us in details what BPLK is and it's a poem so back to the stage so she has a poem and she's from big picture learning Kenya that's BPLK yeah for this other opportunity. I'm happy today to be presenting to you this poem. Um, but before I start today, I've noticed that, you know, I love being like, you know, I'm just happy because this is our day. How are you feeling? Because I'm so much happy. So I'll just like you 
to just tell one great word to your neighbor about any word that you'll use to describe a girl, any word, in one second. Kindly do that, any word. Okay, so that's enough for now. And I will just love one of us. I will just love one of us to stand up and tell us what's the name that you were told. Uh, who's willing? Who's willing to do that? Okay. Oh, Beatty, please. <laughs> Powerful. Wow. Any other person? Yes. Yes, we are all beautiful, right? So today, basically, we are here to know some of our powerful ladies, to know them, to be, we also love to be the way they are, right? And we also love to raise them. So that's why we are all here, and that's why we are celebrating this day. So my poem today is known as Daughter, and you've already heard my name. My name is Muteo Balin Lukalishi, and this is the poem. And as you listen to this poem, Kindly, I want you, I would love you to meditate, I would love you to listen to this poem, and I would love you to think about what it says and what it's all about. Are you ready for this? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Daughter, when you're grown, just in case you want to be an insect, I don't want you to be a fly, knowing that flies depends on waste. Daughter, when you're grown, just in case you want to be an insect, I want you to be a bee, so that if ever a man calls you honey, you should know that you can make honey. Daughter, when you're grown, don't be deceived. There is no man who can take you to heaven. If you want a man who can take you to heaven, start dating Jesus. Daughter, don't be deceived. When you're grown and the world tells you to shake what your mama gave you, I want you to shake your head in disagreement and tell them, this is what my mama gave me, a big hell food of values, principles, and dignity. <laughs> daughter, daughter, when you're grown, don't be deceived. Daughter, when you're grown, don't be deceived. If ever a man who's older than you tells you that they want to, to date you, I want you to tell you to tell them this. I am diabetic. I don't do sugar daddies. <laughs> Daughter, <laughs> Daughter, when you're grown, I will build you a mansion so that you don't fall for men with cubes. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, um, let's prepare ourselves and let's welcome Wanja Maina. Saseni, habari zetu, habari ya wase wa kibera. Watu watu wametoka kibera ama wametoka places zingine? Nionge kizoili, kikuyu ama kizungu? Ala? Sawa, sasa kabla nionge, vile tu amenielezea huyo ni mimi mwenye amesomwa hapo. Uh, lakini nimekuja na rafiki yangu anaitwa Alice. Niliona vile niliitwa sio vizuri mtu kutembea peke yake, si vizuri kutembea na mtu. Ndio hata nikikanyanga nyanya za mtu hapa Kibera kama sina ten bob anisaidie kulipa. So nikakuja na best yangu anaitwa Alice. She's a lawyer. Nataka aongee hata sentence moja ya girls. Na mi ni onge venye ni likuwa ni mambuwa ni seme. Sinu kweli? Tumpigie makofi. Hi girls. Hi ladies. Warembo hi. Wanaume ahum. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Mimi naitwa Alice Wangare. Na nimefurai sana kwa likuwa na wanja kukuja kwa e-function ya girls. Ata mini girl na ninapenda sana kusupport girls kama nyinyi. Nimetoka Kiambu County na mimi ndio aspiring woman rep wa Kiambu County. Thank you. Yeah, and also as you've heard from wanja, 
I am a lawyer. I have been dealing with issues of uh, human rights, mainly uh, female rights, girl child rights, women rights, and uh, psychosocial challenges. And those are some of the issues in Yezikokwa agenda yangu. So, Leo Nimekam, Nimeskiza, uh, all the nice programs that you have. And I am very much inspired that uh, little girls have so much to offer in terms of uh, support groups, in, in, in terms of uh, giving stories, in terms of encouraging one another and standing up for one another so as to expand the rights of the girl child. What I would only tell you is that continue being strong. I know it is very difficult, it is toxic, and I would want us one day to have a session here so that we can tell you the stories of what we go through, especially in the political field. There is a lot of bullying. You know, you can just take an innocent photo and it is going to be misinterpreted. You can hug somebody, a long-term friend, maybe even a male colleague, and it is going to be misinterpreted. And your opponents are going to use it to frustrate you and to spread all types of propaganda against you. There is also another uh, type of psychological violence that is happening to us women in politics. The issue of marriage. You see, like now, tukienda kule mashinani, kama mimi sasa nikienda uko, and I happen not to be married. Those women wa uko mashinani wataniliza, sasa mschana, unutaka kutuongoza kama mama county, na bado wata hujajua kugeuza sufuria, tutakupa kazi vipi. So all those things, dress code also, you know, all those things um, that go towards, uh, you know, thinning the space of women participation in politics. And if I'm invited again by the organizers here, I'm willing to come together with other ladies who are aspiring, and especially as the youth. We are really going through a lot, but we are doing this for the sake of the youth, the young girls like you. I have had somebody here say that they want to be lawyers. I want to expand that space for such a person so that I am using my experiences now to build myself and also to create space for others so that they may find the journey easier. So thank you so much for the organizers. I'm grateful. Let's continue working together. Asante Nisana. Internet. Internet ni kama, ni kama barabara. Ukiuko kwa barabara uta decide venye utaenda hivi juu chini. Ehe, kwa mfano, ukiwa si wale wako primary maybe wanaweza kuwa hawana simu, lakini wale wako college simu kuna simu. Simu najua internet simu mtu anaweza kutumia iko na internet na mtu anaweza tumia kubet. Simu najua hiyo. Simu najua mtu anaweza tumia internet kuenda ku watch pornography. Ama mimi nasema tu vitu zangu za huruma. Ama kibera hakuna? Ama mayuthi kweni na wachomea kwa ma, waposu wenu? Nachoma? Haya, mtu waneza tumia internet kutengeneza account ya kubuli wale watu wengine. Wewe, unambia watu nina vile kwa mnono? Saa wewe, una, uneza tuambia vili? Ehe, politisha na kiandika kitu na muambia, wewe utaenda home 2022 hiko mbali? Ehe, wewe kwanza olewa? Lakini internet, pia unaweza soma kitu, kitu kubwa kuliko ile unajua. Kama mimi, for example, kwa hiyo marketing ya nilisoma, vitu mingi nainanga YouTube na angalia trends za marketing. Internet unaweza tumia kujitengenezea self-esteem. Self-esteem, nani unaweza nielezea self-esteem ni nini? Venyu unajisikia kama wewe, kiwewe, self-confident, self-worth. Internet unaweza tumia kutengeneza profile kama ule faith alisema, YouTube content ya kushare stories za kibera, stories za, za mabeste wenu. Internet unaweza tumia for self care. Self care ni ile unalisa ni ile kitu na kufurahisha, podcast, vitu mzuri, vitu inspiring. Internet unaweza tumia ku connect na watu wengine. Kwa mfano, kama we ni leader na nyu wote ni leader, unaweza pata friend yako mwenye ni leader. Kwa mfano, huku kibera kuna dema anaitwa editor. Unamjua? Mimi nilijua editor kwa internet. So kwa internet unaweza jua watu wengine wenye wakuna values kama zako. Unaweza pata friends, wenye maybe wanataka kustate njo, leaders. Kwa internet, unaweza learn so much. So kwa hii mambo nimesikia digital divide, something, something. Yo, yo moto ya leo ama yo theme ya leo. All I can say is that 
internet is very important but more importantly vile unaitumia for good as a force for good or negatively lakini kwa sababu sisi tumesoma na tuko empowered we are the candles sisi sisi ndio candles wa kibera wewe ndio unafaa who is a christian here yeah? see in the bible tunaambia ngo as a christian you should be the light unabeba kando yako unayekelea hapa au fichi kando chini ya kitanda unaweka juu ya mlima ndio watu wote waone si ndio so as a person who is empowered with digital literacy you should try and use the internet as a force for good to share positively vile tuliambua positive content wenye wamesema ku encourage wale watu wengine kusoma more si wakati ya corona kuna wale walisoma kwa zoom okay kama hamkusoma maybe the future if maybe there will be gadgets maybe you know the land so swezi ongea sana all i can say is that internet is powerful ya kupeana story yako ya ku learn more about mental health mmesikia story za mental health azidafika huku mental health okay kama azidafika zitafika so maybe because naona kani nimeongea sana sijui kama kuna mtu akona question ya kuniuliza nilikuwa tu nimesema most important lessons zenye naweza jishia if i was younger so unaona sasa hivi nimekuwa 30 Mesikia ni story yangu inapanda hivi kishuka. Kama mimi ningekuwa mdogo kama nyinyi, si nyinyi mko 13, 20, 21. Mimi nikaambwa ni advice nikuwa mdogo ningesema five lessons. Be confident. Hello, confidence. Hebu sime re- repeat after me confidence. Confidence. Nasema be confident, get good friends. Naweza sema don't forget where you come from. Hakuna mtu wako embarrassed. Yes, ni kweli ulitoka Kibera lakini You came from the slum, but is there a slum in you? Am I you yangu ingi? I was born in a slum in Kibera, but Kibera was not born in me. So story yako ya Kibera is powerful, but you are just proud of it, but you want a better life for yourself and for your children in the future. Believe in yourself. Have your priorities. Mimi nikaambwa ni advice watu wadogo naweza sema priority ya saini kusoma kama uko na parent ama guardian kum respect kutafuta knowledge kama hii ya freely in hope girls rising lakini sasa mtu akuwa mdogo wakati mwingine don't make mistakes usikuwe kwa tabu na police usikuwe mwizi usitafute boyfriend kwa sababu boyfriend atakuja and for my young girls my young women you are like my sisters be empowered yourself si mnajua challenges zile zina meet women Hello? Hello. Women women wale old nitakuwa nimedanganya nikiambia our young women ni heri ukuwa na 10000 kwa mfuko yako kuliko 10000 ya kuambiliwa. Hello? Hello. Boyfriend amekuambia uache high school ndio uko unaishi kwake ndio akuwa na support. Hello? Hello. Si mimi nimemwambia Mungu alinisaidia nikapata degree na natafuta nyingine. Hiyo yeah. degree size niko na 30 na nilipata nilikuwa 23. Hiyo degree mimi nilikuwa jina nani? Imeandikwa nilitoka huruma. Imeandikwa jina ya parent. Kwa hivyo ukisoma, ukienda high school, uki, ukijisaidia upate diploma degree itakuwa yako kwa jina yako na hiyo itaibadilika. Si ni kweli? Asante for listening to me. God bless you. The world is not ready to welcome the girl child. She is alive, beautiful and ready to change the narrative. She is born a warrior born to fight battles she, she knows nothing about she she has to conquer the world with no weapons to prepare the battles this is because no one to train her about the battle sometimes it's so tough but the, the slogan is always to survive not the brokenness nor anger or fear leads her but passion for change not she's she has to fix this world and make it safer for everyone she is black like a charcoal which is so amazing burns with wonderful lights lights of hope and restoration with frames so bright to ignite the light to the world and now the world is ready to is ready for her because she has conquered the battle is over and the african child has won it it was tough but She believed in leaving a mark and not perishing. She was unpredictable, unchangeable and relied on her strength. She she did not compromise or co- collaborate with her fears but 
rebelled against. The wounds have healed, but her scars makes her strong and brave. It is a reminder of the past. She was born to face any obstacle. Nothing can take her down easily because she believes in herself. No shield, no sword, or any training, but she acquired the skills in the process. She is daring, unshaken, and believes in, in possibility and change. She wants to make tomorrow better, but not wait to build the, the dreams tomorrow. She believes that today is her magical day because the world ce celebrates her and sees the beauty she can share. She will transform everything. The world heard her cries and saw how she was mistreated by our community. Then, if she endured everything, she is tough and strong. She is wise because she has a magic, she has a magnetic mind that can attract and transform dreams into a great future. Today is the most important day of her life. She is going to cast her dreams by starting with the little she has. Because she understands one can never achieve everything at the same time. It has to, to start little by little in order to achieve a great future. She is patient, creative, and resilient. She believes in herself. She is a river that breaks through hard and huge stones to share water with different sources to save lives. The world treasures her because what she sees, no one else can see. And what she offers to the world, no one else can. If she decides to do nothing, the world will be incomplete. She will not lose herself. She's going to fight and persist until she achieves her dreams. The past is her strength that builds her dreams. Dreaming will never get her tired, but in the process of achieving, she will, need, she will require energy. One thing that will keep her going is her curiosity. How will the dreams look, look like in real life? What impact will they make to the world? She is not born to give up, but to give the world the best. Her skills and knowledge are blessings. And now the world celebrates her, be her because her strength is the inspiration of achieving the dreams. Like what I've said, I'm a survivor of sexual violence, and my upbringing was not like that perfect. I was raised by my grandmother and partly my mom, but she was always absent. I've slept outside, but that has not been an excuse for me not to, to, to get to the university or maybe to high school. That has always challenged me to be better and to do right and also use different platforms to reach out to, to different audience. So as for me, I've been using different platforms and just writing, communicating through like writing because I like expressing myself through writing. So be blessed and remember that you are loved. Get Mariana again. Yeah, thank you so much, Marianne, for that amazing poem. It has touched my heart. And when I was listening to it, I, I thought that it was speaking to each and every one of us. Like, we can relate, right? So, and also she's using that platform of writing poems to, to inspire people in the society. So what are you doing with your talent? What are you doing with your laptop? What are you doing with your smartphone? I believe here everybody has a story and they can use their stories in writing, in recording, in, in doing public speaking to reach out to multitude and even millions of people internationally so that they can be able to tackle these challenges that we have in the society. Yeah, so... 
we are going to have group discussions. And in these group discussions, we are going to discuss what gender norms that can be challenged using digital spaces to promote equality. That is number one. That is one of the questions. Number two is, as a group, what is your commitment? So you are forming groups, right? And one of, one of the things that we'll be discussing, I'm going to repeat, what gender norms can we challenge using digital spaces to promote equality? And the group leaders will tell us, because they are, they are going to be representing the groups, what is your commitment? And I'm going to call Carol. I believe she's the moderator to come. Let's appreciate Carol. Thank you so much. So I'm just going to help us go very fast into the groups. We are going to have seven groups. Um, I'll call your names. And this is how I think it can go. So if you're, member, if you're a member of group one, this is where you're going to all sit. Tumeona, pale ni group one, and then there ni group two. Group three will sit here. Group four will sit there. Group five, hapo. Group six, pale. And then group seven, unezaka hapo. Tumelewa manirudie. Tumelewa. So when I call your name, if you're a member of group one, utaenda pali, iso places nimesema. And then because we are a big group, uh, we are, the, the group activity is going to take five minutes. Then when I say hands on, I'm a teacher, <laughs> as you can tell. When I say hands on top, because I don't want to shout, munasema everybody stops. Now, by that time, Mesha Maliza group discussion. Yenyu, we are ready to come back. Sawa, sawa. Let's try it. Hands on top. Pretend, pretend ni kama mnaongea. Ebu, pretend ni kama mnaongea. Hands on top. Yes, we get it. So, uh, that's how we'll go. So, I'll, I'll just begin. And then in your groups, decide who is going to be the speaker. Sawa sawa, mwenye atakuwa na share what you've discussed as a group. And who is going to be the note taker because it's also important that we take notes. So group one, Beryl Apio, Maureen Awino, nataka kuona watu waki move. If you're called, go to your group. Maureen Awino, Christine Olivia, Geoffrey Chacha, Lorraine Apondi, Wayne Rooney, and Christine Aseso, group one. Group two, we have Bridget Mudeu, Osikol, Luwais, Dennis Otieno, Purity Mora, Olga, Michelle Juma, Colleen Wanja, Kerubo, and Kerubo. Those are group two members. Group three, Cecilia, Habetsa, Rose Mwikali, George, Raucho, Rihanna Mutanu, Blessing Atieno, Fatuma Shalom. Group 4, Frida Wanjiru, Rose Namunyak, Janet Njoki, Stanley Bulemi, Cindy Scovia. Group 4, Cindy Scovia, Laura Orua, Lois Anyango. Group 4, Aya. Group 5, Jennifer Abuli, Serafina Njoki, Teresia, Wairimu Velma, Shivoiwa, Teacher Rose Musasi, Cynthia Aoko, Makri Nakinyi, Rukia, Sebit, Na Zilpa Akinyi. That's group five. So group one, group two, group three, group four, group five, group six, group
So what is the one gender norm that you know you've discussed? And then what is the one commitment? Sawa sawa. And uh, we'll begin with group four. Let's appreciate group four. As we welcome group four, group three, get ready. Hello. Hello. Are we okay? My name is Stanley Bulemi, a student from B Picture Learning in Kenya. And uh, here in our group, this is group four. And uh, our main point was uh, the sex. Sex mean being the gender. So here we just focus on being a girl. Being a girl, in our group, we saw that it's a problem. So people tend to believe that girls can't be leaders. Is it true? Is it true? Most people tend to believe that girls are, can't be leaders. Most people tend to believe that girls can't be leaders. Example, example, so example we can use that in, our, in our, this country, our Ken, Kenyan country, we can see that if we see that a lady want to be a president. Do we have president, ladies president in Kenya? Do we have? That's an example. So we can see that ladies are working smarter. They're not working hard, but they're working smarter so that they can be in that position. Example, you can see that our, our chief justice being a lady. That is who? What's her name? What's her name? Mada Koome. Thank you so much. This is our group four. Welcome. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. I'm Rose Mwikali, a finalist at Kenyatta University pursuing community development. Uh, in group three, we are challenging the education system in Kenya. It is set in a way that it is bringing a lot of disparities in the community where some courses are for men, others are for girls, and when you do like a certain course, the society is just there to criticize you, tell you all the negative issues about it, and that gets girl child uh, so much difficult to get some opportunities. The how, the commitments that we're making as a group, we commit to speaking up and providing safe platforms for girls to share their stories and get empowered in the digital space. We commit to mobilizing people from all groups, social networking to help bring gender equality because we believe that we can't do it alone. As you are speaking about the gender equality thing, they saying like gender equality, when you hear of gender equality, it's just women. Which is necessary, it's not necessarily women, it, is, it cuts across, right? But you find in most cases, girls are the most and women are the most disadvantaged, right? So we need to bring across all the decision makers, the uh, advocates, politicians, our, our men, Sasa, to address this issue. Thank you. Group three, um, group two. As group two comes, group one, get ready. Group seven after group one. Moscol Luise, a lawyer by profession. What gender norms can we challenge using digital space to promote equality? For us, we discuss as a, a group. Number one, we wanted everyone to, to understand what's a norm. Secondly, and then what is gender norms? Before we enter to the, what we, the point we gave out, we say that a norm are discouraging negative behaviors or encouraging positive 
behaviors. And we, when we talk about gender norms, can it be a girl, a boy, men, or women? Then our point was cyberbullying, both in men and women. And we gave example of body shaming. Na hii mwili yako kubwa kubwa hii sasa hata wewe unaweza ongea. Kwa media is it true? Na wewe umekaa tu mosquito na hata wewe unajiposti pale. And then even uh, Madam Lawyer talked about uh, the gender roles in bullying, ndio? In politics aliambiwaje? Aende aoleke kwanza njarudi apewe kiti ya women rep then the commitment we say that we set campaign against cyber bullying for example we can we can hashtag her to come to talk about it we can get engineer and so many other classes of jobs we can get those people when they say that a girl cannot be an engineer even long time ago they used to say that Law is for men because you take so many years. But today we have girls. Situko. Thank you. Thank you so much. Group seven. I'm happy to be here once again. So for group seven, um, the agenda norm that we chose was career opportunities. And before we reached there, we discussed what gender norms were. So basically to us, we thought that uh, gender norms are, are those stereotypes that people form or think uh, in regard to gender, whether female or male. So it, it comes or it cuts across the two gender, that is both female and male. So basically ours is on career opportunities and this is what we discussed. Everyone is allowed to take or pursue any career opportunity, regardless of whether they are male or female, right? Yeah, I'm a girl, I want to be a lawyer, what's stopping me? It's nothing, right? You're a boy, you want to become a chef, what's stopping you? It's nothing. If you want to undertake hospitality, if you want to do tourism, you can still pursue it even if you are male or female. Don't let your gender or what people or even the stereotypes that are being formed in our community to stop you. Then our commitment, is to have career talks in different places, such as schools, communities, or to youths, and even to parents, to support or even encourage their students or even their children to pursue any career that they wish. And even to the community sometimes, because the community plays part or it plays a role in what you want to become. So if the community supports you, then you won't give up or even give up in what you want to become. Thank you. Africa studying counseling psychology on to my first question uh, on to my uh, to what we discussed to our group what gender norms can we challenge using digital space so this is a Microsoft SP it's not a Microsoft word and furthermore it's using it's a touch screen so get rid of the mouse so on what we said we said that when we are giving those leader those leadership spaces we will be able to participate in decision making and we will be able to deal with things like outdated cultural practices like fgm and early marriages as you know they 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 have really affected our girls mostly this time of covid so when we're given those platforms we will be able like to create rules that will help us be able to prevent our girls from being told that their space is only meant to the kitchen because we believe that they, it's not only meant to the kitchen, it's meant everywhere. It's just that they think that we only belong to the kitchen, but that's wrong. That is not right. Wow. What do you... What we discussed as our commitment is to encourage women to speak up through coaching and supporting each other. And in our group, we had a, a, a small discussion. We said that ladies, we have to wake up. We have to support each other. Because us, we don't support each other. We have to agree and like we have to accept this bitter truth. You will see even in town, when something happens, 
a girl is saying, Mbonari kwa meva ivo, you're supposed to support your sister. He's either smaller sister or your bigger sister. But when you, you criticize her, when you, 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 you join other people to talk ill of your sister, remember you will be the, the next person being discussed another time. So IDG, let's support each other girls. Okay, so group six, our gender norm was um, men are there for security purposes, where women and girls are seen as the weaker gender. I'm sure all of you have come across such a norm before, once in your life. Where unaskia, tuana kwambi, unaitaji mwana ume kuenda na weme, kama nyusi, unaskia, enda na brother ako, ndo usifanyiwe kitu, unaskia kitu kama yo. Yeah. So on our commitment, we discussed that it's our duty to use our voices to speak out in our communities whenever this norm is normalized and use digital spaces, example, kuna Facebook, in the common, to spread mass awareness and create a safe space for those being affected by this norm. Yeah, thank you. Let's appreciate group six again. So we all agree that we've made major strides in terms of gender norms. Yes, Laurie? Group one. Ah, okay, group one, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry, let's encourage group one. <laughs> My name is Wen Rooney. From our group, we have identified domestic chores violence, domestic chores violence decision making in the family. In the most community, girls do chores and are left out in decision making. Through programs like Talk, Chores to Tell Stories and inspe Inspect Men to Inspire the Gender. Commitment to challenge the negativity attend at attitude that different people have towards create crisis that men and women, boys and girls want to pressure. Example, boys should not be dis discharged to pressure skyrants in cooking, hair and beauty. The girls should not be dis discharged to pressure sex causes. We we all do this through making in the community like bars. Good job, group one. Let's appreciate all the groups. Munataka Snacks. Let's appreciate all the groups again. So like I was saying earlier, we all agree that we've made major strides when it comes to challenging the gender norms that we've mentioned here. Cindy, but there's a lot of work that still needs to be done. So I'm hoping that we'll keep to our commitments and uh, we have our support team. Everybody here in this space eh, needs support team. So let's uh, go back there and do what we said, what we say we will do. So I'm going to call the moderator. Thank you so much for the rich discussions. Thank you so much, Carol, for moderating the presentations. Let's appreciate Carol.
dozi na vibicha vya kichokozi squeeze mwana ume napenda mwana mke ajitume na chape kazi na vikundi vya kusaidiana viko babi yetu ushindi Let's appreciate our beautiful girls again. Yeah. Msichoke, tunamaliza. We have come to the last beat. And by the way, one of my takeaway from that song was Msilale. Girls, Msilale. Sawa, sawa. Yes, don't sleep on your dreams. Don't sleep on your phones. Ati ukilala usiku asubu na mka ni kupost memes ni ku, ku, kuangalia gossip sivyo ndio watu wengi wanafanya squeeze na phones kuangalia what is trending kwa ku gossip about people like the way muheshimiwa mwenye inspiring women rep alikuwa anasema that they they normally criticize leaders pictures ikiwekwa wanataka kuongelelea what can you do with the digital um um instruments that you have to impact the world and i also wanted to say i didn't introduce myself i'm also a student at the university of nairobi i pursued hr and i'm always i'm almost graduating but i also have <laughs> i also have a passion in technology i am doing a course in programming so you see these amazing things that you are doing, the digital spaces. For me, when I become better in that skill, I'll be able to, to come up with a website. And as you can see, like these ones, you can be able to tell, uh, to share the skills that you have, tell your stories, and many people will be able to, to, to see your work in this digital space, all right? So I'm going to call um, Debbie and Lydia for the closing remarks. Yeah, so Debbie is from Girl Rising and Lydia is the program manager in Freely in Hope. She is the mastermind uh, behind the programs that you have in Freely in Hope. And also Debbie is the mastermind behind the programs that they have in Girl Rising. Let's appreciate them. Thank you so much. We are ending on a high, isn't it? Wasiana ametombia tusilale. Sivo? 
Yeah, thank you so much, Sunflower dance Dancers. Thank you so much, Warimo, for the good job you've done. You've been exemplary. Thank you so much. So today's theme, closing the digital divide to accelerate change. We've had so much. We've discovered all of us use technology in one way or another. We are all on social media, so many uh, of them, but how do you use it to make it an advantage to you? How do you use it to support whatever you're doing, whatever stories you're telling? And we've also known that you can get so much content on it, on, um, on, on uh, online, and how safe are you? So we've learned all that, and as we go out in the spirit of Girl Rising, where we create, we collaborate, and we activate, we would like you to go back and be leaders of change, beginning now and not later, within your communities, as you innovate projects that will promote and support gender equity. We are all committing to support gender equity, and at Girl Rising today, we'd like to Thank you all for joining us to celebrate this day. And finally, I would like to announce that Girl Rising in conjunction and in partnership with HP, we have launched a book on gender, challenging gender norms. Tunasema kwa kiswahili samaki mkunje angali. Kwa sauti mimi ni mwalimu samaki mkunje angali mbichi. So we want to start with the young ones by telling stories that are challenging gender norms and we are launching our first book, Girl Rising in Kenya, Go Stella Go, in partnership with uh, HP. And as we wait for the printed copies, we'd like you to download an app known as Nabu. That is where you'll find the book. That is the app known as Nabu. Please download it. Uh, you'll get the Stella book there and also many other books, many stories, because you're what you read. So as you enhance your literacy skills like Sunflower, you enhance your project like Big Picture Learning, and you get to know about gender-based violence like Freely in Freedom Does, Girl Rising is encouraging you to read books on that app. And we close by saying, let us all commit to gender equity wherever we are, in our homes, in our schools, in our communities, let us all commit and girls have potential, and I like that today boys have come in strongly to support the girls. So let's commit to that. Thank you very much, and have a very good day. Our generation, our generation. Our Digital generation. Digital generation. Yeah, in my future life, maybe I'll be a rapper, who knows. Anyway, I uh, just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you for coming today, for celebrating this very, very important day with us. And as Debbie mentioned, a big shout out to the boys. Ebu tupigia my boys, my coffee. Yes, thank you so much for standing with the girls because for us to be able to make a difference, we need you. Cindy, we need each other. And so I'm really grateful for the boys in the room. Makofi are the girls in the room, Iko Abi. Yes, yes. I am, I am so inspired by all the stories that have been shared here on stage, all the performances. So I want to say a big shout out to everyone who performed here on stage today. We really, really appreciate you. And uh, thank you, Marlin, for sharing your gift with us today. Thank you, the dancers, for dancing. Hey, there's one girl who did something here, I'm just like, where will I ever do that? That can split. We really, really appreciate you and your gifts. Continue using that to advocate for change in our community. Sawa, sawa. As you can see, it takes the little things. You don't have to be Mark Zuckerberg to change the world. You don't need to be the president now, now to change the world. You know, it starts with the little things. You can do the small things with great love. And right now, digital is the future. And the future is now, really. There is no other future. The future is now. And so we need to start embracing technology so that we can make strides. As women, in all these upcoming sectors, all these upcoming fields, for example, Nani Alijua five years ago, Kukua YouTube, Baita Kwa Karia, who knew? 
mtu kukuwa youtuber is going to be a career or an influencer who knew you know so right now careers are coming up and they are all falling towards the digital gener- the digital direction sawa so let us um, educate ourselves learn about it kwa mashule wame introduce my laptop take it seriously you know take it seriously learn the basics because that's how you're going to grow in that sector and go far but all in all i just want to shout out everyone who made this event possible a big shout out to girl rising and the entire team big picture sunflower a big shout out to the freely in hope team triza the operations lady you know pauline um everyone the fellows the girls we really really appreciate you and as you go out there remember to do small things with great do small things with great love small things with great love yes yeah, so even when you have a phone t- talk something positive you know share something positive hizo ma status mna share anga venye nani amesema stella don't just share memes share about things that will challenge the way society runs share things that will make me think eh hey, kweli you know i should do something you know so yeah remember to raise your voices in digital spaces thank you stella We thank you Lord even as we come to the close of this event that will continue to protect us and we thank you also for the, f- the for the snacks that we are going to eat may you bless it in Jesus name we also want to say thank you because we believe you are going to be with us to protect us as we come out of this event in every dis- destination that people are going may you protect us and be with us until we meet again in next year during the international day of the girl thank you god and it is the mighty name of jesus we have prayed amen my name is lydia matioli and i am currently the program manager at freely in hope kenya Freely in Hope is an organization that equips survivors and advocates to lead in ending the cycle of sexual violence that is in Kenya and in Zambia. How we do that is through uh, providing educational opportunities uh, for survivors, leadership development opportunities, and storytelling platforms where we leverage on the power of storytelling to provide uh, both personal and collective healing for the scholars that we work with. So today we are here to celebrate the International Day of the Girl Child. We commemorate it annually every year. We are here um celebrating the girl child, the strides that they've made uh, in our current society in all the spheres. Um and today specifically the focus was on the uh, on the digital space. Uh we know that this is an area where um a lot of girls shy away from because of the norm that it is for the you know the male it is male dominated but so uh but then today we wanted to really really encourage the girls to take up space in the digital uh world uh we wanted to let them know that it's possible and we wanted to provide you know and and explore all the ideas uh that relate to this particular field so i feel like today we really um helped that little girl who attended this forum to know that they can use their voice um to talk about issues in our in our community and that it just needs to start with the little things you know yeah my name is Stella Wairimo I'm a student at the University of Nairobi pursuing BCom and majoring in human resource management I am also a scholar in an organization called Freely in Hope that le- equips women in leading in ending the cycle of sexual violence in the society and today we had an amazing event International Day of the Girl to celebrate girls in in my community and their day and the theme was to ac- ac- accelerate change to accelerate change in closing the digital divide and so in this event today we were able to learn more on how girls can use the online platforms to raise their voice in the digital space so that they can be able to tackle issues that people are facing in the society and my take away from this event is to use the social media platforms 
to be able to equip people out there and teach people way, good ways to become better people in the society. Hi, my name is Vieti Mushi Moturi and I am with Big Picture Learning Kenya, part supporting Girl Rising program. Today we are uh, celebrating Independence Day of the Girls, International Independence Day of the Girls. As to what I've learned today as I've joined this um, program is that every gender is equal and that your gender does not determine the kind of future you want, the kind of career choice you need or your, you know, your, your mental um, stability. Every job that's out there, every opportunity needs to be equal, needs to be ready accessible to any gender and should not be limited because of your gender. Like, you know, every, every gender is equal and should, or it should be taken as such. Um, my name is Habiba Osman and um, today celebrating the International Day of the Girl Child. And I am a Form 2 girl from Nongkopir High School. And also I've learned so many things that I should be confident and I should always stay positive. And I should never let anybody put me down in anything that I do. I should stay strong. And also in, in, I sh in, the, digi in the digital space, I should do positive things that will encourage me later in life, that will make me a better girl and a better woman in the, in the future.